Now let's continue with issues of educational system. In this video, we'll be talking about the instructional system. Three major components of an instructional system are number one, the instructor, number two, the students, and number three, we have the media. That is to say that in the instructional system, there are three major components, and that is number one, the teacher, that's the instructor. We have the students, those are the learners, whatever their level, and we have the media. Now, we need to think about the relationships that exist between the teacher and the student, or the students and the media, or the three of them. If you look at the image we have on the screen, we have the student, S1, another student, S2, and another student, S3. Let's represent the class like that. The students are S1, S2, S3. You can see with the arrows there that these students are connected. They are together. But then there is also double edge or double arrow links between each of these students and the teacher. So the, the students relate with the teacher. But not only that, look at the M. That M stands for the media. I think you can see the key is also by the side there. That T is for the teacher, S for the student, and M for media. See that relationship, possible relationships between these elements of the instructional system. And that depends on the type of approach that the teacher adopts in the course of the instruction. Let's look at number one, teacher-mediated approach. This approach is also known as the teacher modality. The teacher plays the major role, the central role. See that teacher? Between the teacher and the student, there is a live interaction. In this case, the classroom is teacher controlled and the strategies taken by this teacher is formal. Formal teaching, chalk and talk. He, he talks to them, he writes with the chalk on the board or maybe the marker on the marker board, as the case may be. Another strategy under that is the expository technique. We have the inductive or indirect teaching. These are possible strategies that the teacher can engage under the teacher-mediated approach. In this case, the teacher organizes the student. He organizes the instructional materials for teaching and learning. Let's look at another pattern. Patterns of student-teacher interaction. We have a type of interaction we call co-action. And we have another one we refer to as interaction. We have one called co-action and the other one referred to as interaction. The T once again stands for the teacher and the S stands for a student. Look at these six students, the way they relate with the teacher. But if you look very closely, you will discover from this pattern that there are no interactions between the students. They only relate to the teacher directly. This is what we call co-action. But if you look at this other pattern on the screen, the same S1 to S6 representing the student, T is for the teacher. You will discover that all the students, one way or the other, relate with themselves and they relate with the teacher directly. Which one would you prefer, my friend? The co-action or the interaction? Which one do you think will yield better benefits? Of course, interaction. 
their teachers should be mindful of this and ensure that they create interactive pattern when they instruct the students.